Vite is a front-end build tool from Evan Yu, the creator of Vue.js. Vite mainly consists of two parts. A no-bundle server that serves our source files over native ES modules. And a pre-configured, roll-up-based production bundler that produces highly optimized builds. It can also be used as an alternative to cloning your Svelte project from GitHub. Vite provides us with a better and faster development experience because of features like instant server start, super fast top module replacement, and out of the box TypeScript support. We can use Vite with vanilla JS or the most popular JavaScript frameworks like React, Vue, or Svelte. Vite also provides us with the option to use TypeScript transpiling for frameworks that support it. To initialize a new project, we need to open a new terminal and navigate to a directory where we want to store our projects. From there, we write npm init vite at latest and hit enter. If it's your first time using vite, it'll ask you to install an additional package. Without it, you won't be able to create a new project, so choose Y and hit enter. Next, choose a name for your project. If the name has multiple words, use kebab casing with dashes between the words. Then, choose the framework you want to use with the arrow keys. In this case, we want Svelte. And finally, select Svelte for the JavaScript variant and hit enter to generate the project. Once the project has been generated, we'll need to install its dependencies. So, we'll cd into my Vite project. Then run npm install. After the dependencies have been installed, type code, space, period, and hit enter to open up the new project in VS Code. The first thing you'll probably notice is a few different files and folders. Instead of a rollup config file, we now have a Vite config. We won't be messing with it here, but if you want more information about it, you can follow this link in the comment to the official documentation. It's also worth mentioning that Vite supports all Svelte compatible plugins on top of its own. So, you can add Svelte plugins like JSON into this array here, and everything will work like it did when we used Rollup. We'll leave links in the description for both plugin lists. If we go into the source directory, we'll see a new folder called lib. That's just where Vite stores components, but you can change the name to something else if you like. We'll leave it as it is. Another change we should be aware of is that Vite mounts the Svelte application instance to a div instead of the body. If we open the main.js file, we'll see the target option is set to an element with app as the ID. And if we open the index.html file, we'll see that div inside the body. One of the benefits of using Vite is the speed at which it starts and hot reloads the dev server, regardless of how big the application becomes. To run the dev server in Vite, we use the same command we did with rollup. So, back in the editor, we'll go up to the terminal menu and open a new terminal. From there, we can start the server with the dev command, so npm run dev. Vite will run its dev server on localhost, port 3000. If we open it up in the browser, we'll see the starter app with a logo, some text, and a click counter. When it's time to build the app for production, we can run the build command. Vite will build an application bundle that can be served over a static hosting service like Netlify. Let's go back to the terminal and stop the dev server with Ctrl and C. If you're on a Mac and Ctrl C doesn't work for you, you can try Command and Period. To demonstrate the process, we'll build this starter app. So, npm run build and hit enter. Once the application has finished building, we'll see a new folder in the project. We want to deploy everything in this folder to a web host. But before we do that, we can preview what it would look like by running the built-in preview command. If we run the command, Vite will serve the disk folder over the HTTP protocol to simulate a real server. So, npm run preview. 
the preview will be served on a different port number than the dev server. If we open it up in the browser, we'll see the starter app, and we can test that everything works, like the click counter. Alright, that concludes this beginner series, Forspelt. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.